morning. Hello. Good morning. Thank you. Hey, we're thrilled to be here. I'm Brian Gentile with Jaspersoft. And I'm Miriam Turk with Infobright. Um, we have to talk to you about a really important topic of competing more fully on analytics. We're talking about drowning in data that exists today in the enterprise, but being able to deliver sophisticated insight using better business, uh, better business analysis. We're going to do this through a pretty brisk agenda, admittedly. We've got about 20 minutes to talk to you about a new era of competition that we're all facing. The ability to compete more precisely with analytics rigorously in the enterprise. But there are, let's make no mistake, a number of barriers to success that we're going to have to overcome. We're going to talk about those briefly, as well as what Infobright and Jaspersoft are doing to help rise up and provide open source business intelligence and data warehousing that allows essentially everyone to compete more fully on analytics. Admittedly, we're going to talk briefly about Infobright and Jaspersoft using customer examples to show you just how forcefully we can do this and how everybody has now the chance to compete on analytics more fully. And then we'll leave you with some pointers to where you can go learn more, especially about the technical aspect, uh, aspects of this at our booth. So let's take a look. I want to start with an example from a book, uh, Competing on Analytics, by Davenport and Harris. Some of you may be familiar. They use an analogy at the beginning of the book about one of the most chronicled and statistically compared analyzed uh, industries of all, which is Major League Baseball. So whether or not you're a Boston Red Sox fan or not, uh, this is an interesting example because baseball has been analyzed arguably incorrectly for a couple of decades now. The age-old indicators of runs batted in, earned run averages, batting averages were failing to predict properly the individuals who could succeed and the teams that would succeed, especially during the course of the 90s. So new metrics were being developed, and this, this ushering in of a new age of analytics in Major League Baseball occurred. The Red Sox, arguably the poster child for this, whether or not you're a Yankees fan, they, they arguably have come back amazingly based upon their, their success with analytics. And the solution here was new owners, new analytic expertise, and of course a pretty good bankroll being a major market team to overcome their 86-year drought. The result, if you recall, if you rewind to 2003, again, for those of you who are Yankee and Red Sox fans, you remember the American League Championship in 2003. Game five, Pedro Martinez on the mound, seventh inning. Now, make no mistake, the statistics showed that Martinez, after exactly 105 pitches, his earned run average and the slugging percentage against him literally doubles. So the pitching coach informed the general manager under no circumstance after the seventh inning and about 105 pitches should Martinez stay in the game. The general manager uh, decided against that, left Martinez in for an eighth run routing by the Yankees. The Red Sox lose the American League Championship. General manager is replaced. Uh, and, but a doubling down by the Red Sox on their use of analytics that carries them forward into a World Series championship in 2004, the end of the 86-year drought, and then a re-upping re of that win in 2007. A pretty fantastic comeback for the Red Sox. A good baseball example, but there are probably even better examples in business today. And so we know many companies in the business world who are winning in their marketplaces because of uh, their use of analytics as a, as a competitive advantage. And the attributes of a company that uses competitive uh, uh, analytics as a competitive advantage are that, uh, number one, they have large-scale ambition. These people are not someone who just wants to make an incremental, incremental move on the marketplace. They're companies that want to take the mountain and really uh, move the whole marketplace to the next level. They are also companies who have a strong senior management capability and commitment towards analytics. And so it's a company that's got to do analytics in every department across all parts of the organization. Uh, and lastly, they're a company that has a distinctive capability. And so when you're an IT organization, what does that mean for you? Um, you could click for me, please. Sure. Thanks. And so what does that mean for you in the IT department? Why is uh, it difficult to support and manage a, a business that is trying to compete on analytics and, and have competitive advantage in the marketplace? And there's a couple of real reasons for that. The first is that while you're trying to be very focused on the operational systems and uh, uh, maximizing performance of your applications and the things that are really transactional and, and, and delivering revenue today, the complexity of the business intelligence and data warehouse technologies and solutions and the difficulty that your users have in using that systems mean that you end up doing a lot of manual work for uh, one of analytic questions and one of type uh, analytic reporting when you really want to focus on the other side of the business. 
Um, the second piece of that is that while the business is scaling and you've got a lot more people wanting to do analytics and you've got a lot more data, your IT budget and resources and time doesn't increase as well. And so you need to find a way to deliver the service to that without increasing the cost of the software, the hardware, and the per user capabilities, both in software and hardware costs, but also in TCO and supporting it. Um, and it's very difficult as it moves throughout the rest of the business to support all the various different uh, applications when you have complex technologies under the the cover for business intelligence and analytics. Right? So we are seeing the rise of the use of open source technologies for both business intelligence and data warehousing. Many surveys have been done. Most of you have probably seen some of these. This is some research from Forrester. I apologize for the small font size. There wasn't any real great way to scale this. But essentially, the charts are showing different categories in this first build of infrastructure adoption of open source software. Uh, the, green, the different shades of green represent the uh, use and adoption, whether it's already been adopted and used in the enterprise or whether it's about to be in the next year. Those are the phases represented in the different green bars. So you can see from top to bottom, the different categories of infrastructure software that have been adopted already or are about to be adopted. Interesting, or maybe surprisingly, database software is the second category from the top here, with a clear 85% uh, being used or about to be used in the enterprise uh, uh, in open source technology. And it's ahead of, of what I would have thought it would have been ahead of it, which is uh, operating system layer. So great adoption of infrastructure software, databases being right up there at the very top of the adoption curve. Now, if we move to business applications and look at the same sort of data, same schema, same format, same Forrester research, we see business intelligence in the middle of this stack uh, with about, about, 50, about 58 percent of adoption in the enterprise when you add up all the different layers of either having already adopted or about to. So nicely high in the application stack, business intelligence and data warehousing combined are set to deliver the ability for every organization to compete more fully on analytics. We're certainly doing our part to help make that happen. And so what does an open source business intelligence solution look like? Uh, really, with InfoBright and Jaspersoft, you can put together a very um, tightly integrated, seamless solution. Uh, you would start with Jasper ETL and getting the data in. And because of the attributes of the InfraBright data warehouse technology, you can load lar very large volumes of data. Um, you can load it very quickly without having to do a lot of translation work. Very simple and easy process without a lot of manual ETL work. Um, because the InfraBright data warehouse has a metadata layer um, and is a column oriented data store, it supports a, a, a myriad of queries without having to do separate extracts and, and a lot of um, uh, indexing and data organization and, and replication, and that makes it easy for the Jaspersoft BI tools to be able to interface with it and, and be used by users. Now, in this diagram, Jaspersoft as a company is arguably best known for our embeddable, highly integrated uh, Java-based reporting engine and library known as Jasper Reports. Arguably, that's what we're most known for. We're also probably very well known for our, uh, our development, our graphical report development environment known as iReport. Uh, in this slide, though, we show three of our other products that collectively comprise the Jaspersoft BI suite. On the left side, the Jasper ETL layer is used, as, it would, as you'd expect, to extract, transform, and load source data into the InfoBright data warehouse. So that's the first component of the suite that's being described in this slide. Over on the right side, though, uh, where the end user actually interacts with the software is where we place an enormous amount of time and effort that I'm going to describe solving the needs of the BI power user through a full OLAP-based multidimensional capability analytic tool known as Jasper Analysis that all runs through and with our Jasper server product, Jasper server technology, which provides for the integrated interactive report server and repository that serves up this, this analysis, the reporting and the reporting tools, as well as uh, dashboards that can be uh, delivered, especially to an end user who can customize and build their own dashboards. In fact, the next slide shows arguably the better example of a great dashboard and, and I wanted to show this because it's a super example of very simple, powerful BI that, that can be given to such a wide audience. And if we stand for something, it's about getting BI to a much broader class of citizen than the preceding aged proprietary products would have ever, ever allowed. Uh, one example here is the integration of lots of different data types into a single Web 2.0 construct. So everything you see in the Jasper server engine is full AJAX, dynamic HTML, sideband chatter with the server so the frames can refresh at their own pace. Everything is designed to be highly integrated and interactive. And the first chart uh, shows, uh, the first element here shows different sophisticated chart types that can be embedded. The second would be integration with other tools like R, the statistical analysis language for predictive analysis and data mining, an R chart embedded right here into the Jasper server dashboard. 
Um, or how about just traditional columnar charts or uh, cross tabular charts can be embedded as well and built and embedded. And then maybe interestingly is the web 2.0 feeds. The web, any URL addressable data can be embedded inside the dashboard as I'm showing here. A Google feed, Twitter feed, news updates, salesforce.com data, a wide variety of things. And when you embed something here, it's as easy as essentially a URL addressable drag and drop. And the input controls from the, dash, from the Jasper server dashboard would actually manipulate and control that URL addressable data. So a true Web 2.0 mashup dashboard. Uh, very, I think we think very exciting and it's certainly allowing us to reach a very big audience. So just a little bit about Infobright. Um, we are very honored. Yesterday we were awarded Partner of the Year with MySQL and uh, um, thrilled to have the community and uh, MySQL pick us for that. Um, some of you may not know uh, that we launched the product as a full open source uh, product and company in uh, May of uh, sorry September of last year. And so we we're the first commercial open source data warehouse uh, 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 product in the marketplace. Um, we've had strong momentum since then. We're very proud that we've got more than 50 customers in seven countries uh, around the world almost every time zone using our product. Um, we've got a large partner infrastructure and network that we are building um, and a strong and growing open source community. I, I dream of getting to 70,000 downloads someday, um, but we're very happy with the, uh, with the number of downloads that we've had. Um, in addition to winning a number of awards, uh, uh, if you're going to be uh, given an award from Gartner, being the cool vendor uh, is the one that I wanted for sure. And uh, a couple of uh, uh, examples of some of the great customers we have, Swiss Port, Royal Bank of Canada, um, Trade Doubler, um, uh, Sulaki, who I think uh, Osmo was giving a, a presentation on his solution earlier today or earlier this week. Just to talk a little bit now about the technology uh, behind uh, Infobright. Um, and an example with Trade Doubler. So Trade Doubler uh, is uh, one of the largest online advertising uh, networks in Europe. They support, if you are looking at an ad for Nike or Apple or any of those types of companies in Europe, you're probably having that ad uh, uh, presented to you via Trade Doubler. Um, and they were trying to do an analytics data warehousing application. Um, they had 20 billion online transactions a month. They were looking at doing it with a traditional row-based technology, and it was unable to quickly handle the needs from an analytic data warehousing application. Um, it was very, going to be very costly because it was going to take a lot of hardware and a lot of storage. Infobright has the best compression in the industry, and so um, because the footprint was uh, 20 to 30 times smaller than what they were already having, they were able to get uh, significant cost savings there. But even better than that, um, both the load speed in terms of the ability to load the data because you're not having to create indexes and all of those kinds of things and it's a column oriented solution, uh, the load speed was just unbelievably fast and the query performance was sub-second uh, compared to queries that were taking 20 and 30 minutes uh, in a traditional row-based solution. So they were very, very happy. They were able to, um, they benchmarked us compared to row-based solution. I think the server technology they were using, the row-based solution was more than half a million dollars. The server they implemented with us was a single $12,000 server. Brian? Great, thank you. So maybe, the, maybe one of the fun facts you can take away from this conference is here in 2009, Jaspersoft has emerged as the most widely used business intelligence software in the world. And, and this is, it happened, of course, because of the pull and the effect of the open source model. So we couldn't be prouder. Uh, 8.3 million downloads as of this morning, uh, estimated more than 100,000 production deployments of our software around the globe. Uh, 92,000 registered developers in our community, which is just thrilling to us because it's a community that gives and takes and knows and, and works with us every day to do, advance the product platform at a pace that we could never do without them. 10,000 commercial customers across 96 different countries, great sales growth. Um, again, as a commercial open source company, we couldn't be prouder. We have delivered community and professional or commercial editions of all of the products that I've described, including the full suite. That's, that's how we go to market as a core open source uh, company. We are the, the leading BI, uh, open source BI company that delivers to the mid-market and organizations of all size. Some small examples or some simple examples are here on the slide. Some major customers who are doing significant things as a sample of these customers, whether it's the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory delivering Mars telemetry data and studying it and analyzing it, or if it's the University of, of Nebraska uh, delivering superior student information systems, they're using Jaspersoft as part of their method to incre increase their ability to compete on analytics. We've won the Duke's Choice Award, we won the, the Java Jolt Award, so we feel like we've got a platform and a product line that's second to none. Certainly one of the customers and partners that we're most proud of is Monolith Software Solutions, who's here with us at the conference. Um, they have really used the Jaspersoft full BI suite in some very novel ways. 
to create an analytical application, if you will, that automates the needs of the quick serve restaurant industry. So they deliver their software suite to franchise owners in major uh, areas of the country. Their goal was to compete not just regionally for small franchise operations of the restaurant world, but to compete nationally on a very large scale with those restaurant chains that have thousands and thousands of, of restaurants. Um, and the, the ability to move those customers from a relatively aged mechanism of analyzing their business to a very novel, advanced mechanism where they can compete genuinely on analytics uh, and overcome all kinds of obstacles along the way. Their choice was Jaspersoft BI Suite, a number of Sun software products, of, of course, including MySQL, but going on and including NetBeans and GlassFish and so on. Um, and they're consolidating an enormous amount of data into a single data warehouse based on MySQL. And they're doing it for 70 different franchise organizations, more than 2,000 stores, and 4,500 end users. The CEO, Bruce Belvin, is here. And he describes how Jaspersoft and the suite we deliver has helped him to compete on this national scale. And we have great plans together in the future. So I thank them for their good partnership and good business. Uh, the last thing we want to tell you about, and hopefully that you can go and learn more about upon leaving, is a joint project that Infobright and Jaspersoft are sponsoring uh, at the Jasper Forge. So what we've done is consolidate our, consolidated our community editions of our products into a single spot on the Jasper Forge, where you can access and, and download, with, along with integrated examples, a, a quick start guide, uh, and so you can learn more easily, more quickly about how to integrate and create this full business intelligence and data warehousing answer. The uh, URL is listed here, jasperforge.com/project/infobright, and uh, you know we're thrilled. We'd be thrilled to have you come and register and, and download and, and tell us what you think. And in case you wanted to move from the community edition uh, up to the commercial edition, we have a promotion where if you decide that you want to uh, get both JasperSoft and Infobrite, you can get a 20% discount on, on the joint offering uh, from our companies. Where you can go learn more, we're at booth 300 in the exhibit area. Uh, we're thrilled and proud to have OpenBI there with us uh, as well. They're showing cloud-based demonstration of the full BI and data warehousing answer, our integration that I I foreshadowed earlier in my dashboard example. Uh, we have theater presentations going on. The we have a great technical team there between Infobrite and Jaspersoft. You can get the t-shirt, uh, which is a must take away from the event, and you can learn more about the 20% savings promotion if you wish. Brian was very kind in wearing an Infobrite t-shirt this yeah. morning, but there's also a Jaspersoft t-shirt if yeah. that's, uh, if you want to get one of each. Um, I do want to point out that uh, being that Infobrite is a software-only solution, uh, as is Jaspersoft, OpenBI totally independently just took our community edition, downloaded it, and they built a simple cloud demo um, of how it runs on the cloud. And so the flexibility and the uh, ease of use of both of our technologies is just totally amazing when you see what he's done there, uh, what that company's done there, uh, including including integration with R in a cloud environment. Um, so in addition to that, though, uh, Mark Manson's going to be giving a keynote tomorrow morning where he's going to be talking about open source business intelligence. He's going to have a couple of, uh, of uh, 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 customers who are going to talk about their experience of how they're using uh, analytics and how they serve their business from that perspective. And of course, uh, we would love for you to come to our websites, uh, infobright.org and jasperforge.org, uh, as well as our .com websites. And with that, we thank you for your time and hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very thank much. You.